Hello fellow Wormian. This is a video about uh, making missions in Worm Unlimited. And we are going to go over every detail that I personally know. Uh, so this is going to be probably a three part project where we will do progressively more complex missions. And to start out, we were will going over a just a few very basic mission types that I'm going to show you today. Uh, this is not all my personal knowledge. Much of this knowledge I have learned from Emma Grace, a fellow community member, and uh, thank you Emma for showing me the ropes. Of course, if you have any questions about the video or making missions in general, you can always head over to the Warm Unlimited modding forum. Uh, which is a Discord server actually. The link is down in the description. All right, let's get started. So to actually be able to make missions, you will need a certain item. So you'll activate your GM wand, go to specials, go to create, and then you give yourself a mission ruler. There. Uh, you can leave all those other fields empty as always. It works with any quality and this is the item you need to make the missions. Alright, I went ahead and packed some of these dirt fields which shall be our little mission area here. Which we'll be using to fool around a little bit. So let's just start, right? So if you activate your mission ruler and right click anywhere, you'll get the option manage missions and a new window will pop up. So basically a mission it consists of three major parts. The mission itself, triggers and effects. You can start working with anything from any direction you like, but I tend to follow a certain sheen. So I'll always go into the mission list first and then go from there, but you will see. So let's create a new mission. If you want to, you can take a peek here into these missions. Depending on how much religious missions are on your server, you will see a list. Uh, you can kind of ignore those, but they are there. So just head here and create a new mission. So your mission will need at least uh, three chars for the name. Um, I'll just call this test mission. And you can do a group, you don't have to do a group, but I tend to do mine, uh, call them custom, so I know it's mine. You can set it to inactive, so that mission uh, will not get triggered by its triggers. You can hide it from players, so it's not shown in their mission progress bar. And you can write an instruction. As it says here, this text will appear as pop-up when the mission starts. So only when the mission starts, this text will be shown. But also this text will be shown when one is going to check their missions. To see your mission progress, you can go in your HUD settings and activate your mission progress. This character right now has no mission progress, so I cannot see any mission progress bar but you'll see it in a bit. So let's have a little instruction or introduction text. This is a test mission, right? You can also set it to fail on death or to fail after a certain time period. And you can also set it to uh, you, the players to be able to restart the mission if they fail the mission if they died or the time ran out or something else. Or you can set the mission to be repeatable, but when it finished. So if you can imagine like uh, you have a little walk around town quest, right? And uh, people get introduced to where is what, and maybe someone forgot where something is. So then they can restart the mission, even they finished it and do the town tour again, something like that. This, your imagination is the limit. And of course, Worm's technical limitations, but we'll see. All right, then we'll click create mission. And now 
I took too long. That's a warm quirk. If you took long, take longer than 15 minutes, <laughs> nothing happens. Okay, so let's do it fast. It's the test mission. Custom. This is a test mission. No restart. Oh, maybe make restart when finished and create the mission. All right. If that succeeded, you will now enter the mission window. So this is the same window if I close that down. It's the same window as if I go to list missions. See, there's this test mission. Yellow means yeah, it's not active because it has no trigger. And if I hit edit mission, I see the same window. Of course, you can always change your inactive or hidden state or the fail and restart states anytime when you edit your mission. So now we've got a mission, but how do we start that mission at all? We need to trigger it. So uh, let's see, I'm going to create a, a rock shard real quick. And pave this one tile to be gravel so that we just know this is our special mission tile. Because now we need a trigger. Your mission is there, but it doesn't know when the player, well, is entering or leaving, basically. And for that we use a trigger. So again, we do manage missions. And I'll go over the mission list. You can do it however you want. So I go edit mission. And then as you can see, the triggers say, no triggers found. So first you need to create a new trigger, which is practically the same as when we created a mission, just a different type. So imagine like a pyramid and the top of the pyramid is the mission and the trigger is a level below. Of course, you need to name your trigger and it's best to make your own system work for that. So I'll just do T and then test mission zero 01, something like that. And of course, you can give it a more detailed description if you need that, but uh, this is optional. All right, as you can see, it says here gravel at 955, 1516. This is the tile. So this blue text will always show what you right clicked before opening the mission ruler window. So if I clicked right click this pack dirt and go to manage missions, it would say pack dirt at, right? Or if it's an item, it would say that item. So you need to be careful of that. Because now this tile, which I right click to open the mission trigger, uh, is now the tile we are talking about. So this tile will be the trigger, right? All right. So first we need to set up uh, a condition that triggers that trigger. Hmm. So you can also pick any item. So if your player wants to, I don't know, has to rake something or cut grass, you can do that. We'll do that in the second or third video. But for now, we just want a simple mission. So we can do uh, item use none. So it doesn't care which item the player is using. And here you can see all the actions of the game, add to building, analyze, cut down. Um, but there's also things like step on or talk, which is very interesting stuff. So for now, we're just going to do step on. So if a player with non item used steps on this tile, which is the gravel 955-1516, this trigger will be called. Okay, but of course we also will need to set up a mission which belongs to the trigger. And this will be our test mission. You can leave the triggered state from zero to zero for now and then create the trigger. So the thing about triggers is, or missions is, a mission has a mission state of 0%, right? Makes sense. If a player didn't start a mission, it has 0% progress. But if the first trigger for that mission is triggered, it will be always set to 1%. So a mission that has a mission state of 1 
will be started. So you can read that here in the notes for the trigger. Seeing a trigger effect that triggers or not start at zero will start a new mission and set its state to one. So your first trigger for your mission always needs to have the triggered state zero. So it can start the mission. All right. So now we can update that trigger because we created it and then the, basically the trigger window popped up. So this is the same thing. If once you create the trigger, the trigger window, edit trigger window will pop up and then you can still change things around, add effects, which we will do later. Update the trigger, delete the trigger or clone it if you want to mess, mess create some cl triggers. Cloning is pretty useful. Yeah, and to, to go back, you can either update your trigger with doing nothing or go back. Your choice. All right. So if we check our mission here now, it says, all right, uh, there is this trigger, which is blue. That means you currently have selected this trigger with the mission ruler. Then it's blue. And yeah, that will start the mission. So let's update the mission. You also can see it's still blue in the list because I have right clicked the, this field, which is a trigger of this mission. And then the entry is blue. Okay. And then we can go back and go back. So now if I step on this tile, the mission should get started. So I'll just do that. I need to uh, revoke my invisibility as GM character here. And I'll step on and we get our little pop-up. This is a test mission. Cool. But if I step off, nothing happens, right? Hmm. So we can also see here a test mission has been started, but the state does move on. So if a player would have this mission, it would be forever in his mission window. We can double click this and you'll get the description back. So if you are doing quests of some type, so these descriptions could be used to guide the player in a certain way. All right, so now we've got a mission and it started and it can be finished. So. What do we need? We need a mission effect. And this is the third component of a mission. The mission effect belongs to a trigger. So if you go back and see list triggers, we have here our list trigger. And this is our mission starting trigger. And it has no effect. See that? But we can create an effect. And the effect is the most mind-blowing thing ever because it can do anything if you want. Well, almost anything. <laughs> uh, I'll name it E test mission 01. If I can type today. Again, it can have a description, but this will do not cause a pop-up. Right? This is just a description for you. Uh, I've never used these three options because again it says right here they are dangerous uh, so I'm not using them the re reward tab is is something we will use later but for now I'll just keep that clear and also the tiles tab is something we'll talk about later right okay but the general tab is what we'll need so mission state affected is the most important thing here you can have this effect effect non-mission. So like imagine we walk on this tile, we step on that tile and we will not affect any mission. So there would be no progress for that mission, but we could potentially set up the trigger so that we can repeat that effect. Like any time a player walks over that tile, <laughs> a raging spider spawns or something like that. That is totally doable. So you need to be following your own, well, your own script in your head there, what you want to do with the effect. So if you want this trigger or this effect that belongs to this trigger, bring the mission forward, you need to also put in your test mission here. Uh, for this little test mission, I just want to uh, finish the mission immediately. So I'll set it to 100%. It doesn't matter. Um, 
if you have multiple effects and your mission is at like 20 percent if you set an effect to 100 percent it'll bring that mission to 120 percent but then the game will notice ah okay the mission is above 100 percent so it finishes that mission immediately and you can also map a sound to your mission for that effect uh, i like to do the bell sound effect this little one here So all the triggers for my missions always have this little hand bell. All right, this activate, deactivate, I use it very rarely, but you can use effects to deactivate missions. Like um, for example, if you have a spawn area and people can pick some tools, then maybe picking the pickaxe will lock you out of picking the the, the hatchet something like that right if you have a mission for every item that rewards the player with a pickaxe or a hatchet you can lock them out so they don't can so they cannot use the mission that gives them a hatchet you can also activate and deactivate triggers and effects but again i'm not playing around with that too much i'll just go mission and then there are triggers inside the mission and there are effects belonging to that triggers and you can still do most of the things with that. Now, if you want your effect to have a pop-up, you need to put in text in both of these fields here. So if you just do test here, it won't create a pop-up. And if you just do test here, it might create a pop-up, but the surefire way is to just put something here and here. So this is a top test. So this is like attention, you noticing this message has been noticed. Create the effect. And now we are back to the trigger menu. Create the effect. And now we are back to, again, the same effect window. It has been created and automatically the edit trigger effect window has been opened. So everything is, is set up, it's fine. So I'll just hit update effect. And now I'm back in my trigger. But as you can see, the trigger has no effect. So you have to link that manually. Even though we set up the effect so that it affects our mission. So you can see that if you go back to the test mission. Oops, that was my trigger. <laughs> You go back to the test mission. You can see there are other mission effects that change the mission state. And you see, it's all unlinked. And you see the effect test mission 01 is there, but it's not linked to any trigger. So again, we go into the trigger, go down to effects, and then we link that effect. All right. And after that, I'll update the trigger. And now we have in our mission, the trigger and the trigger effect. We update the mission and then we step forward to that gravel tile and nothing happens. Do you know why nothing happened? I'll show you. Just to see, nothing happens. We go back to the tile, manage missions. Remember that trigger if we go to the trigger list and if your list is full of triggers, always remember the blue one is the one you're looking at. Edit that trigger and you see it's triggering from zero to zero percent. Well, the mission state is at one percent, so that trigger is not going to fire anymore, right? So we need to set this to something higher. So it triggers from zero that is useful to start a mission and then triggers to, let's say 10%. It doesn't matter because our effect state is plus 100%, right? So it will finish the mission right away. So update the trigger and then I'll go back. And now if I walk on the tile, we should get our test pop up there. See, attention, you're noticing this message has been noticed and the mission state changed over to done and now 
we can do this all over again. <laughs> so, that is a very simple test minute mission. We can also go back and go back to the mission and set it to not restart. Update that mission. And now if I walk on the tile, nothing happens since the mission is done. So that's also something to know. Right, now let's make a new mission. I've explained how to make these triggers, how to link an effect. And let's do a very basic um, little mission here. All right, so I'll just, no, that is not what I want. <laughs> I'll go manage missions, create a new missions, and I call it cats. Uh, it might be restarted uh, when it fails, and it fails on death. And I'll, mm, I'll, I won't do an introduction pop up. That's correct. Then I'll go ahead and create a new trigger, and I call it T cats. And when it triggers, so at zero percent, you can also call it zero. I'll call them zero one. And this time, I don't want to trigger that when people step on that tile. I want to trigger it when people examine that tile. Still gravel. So, as you can see, a tile can be target for multiple triggers. And a mission can have multiple triggers. And a trigger can have multiple effects. So you see where that's going. Of course, we are triggering the mission cats and we trigger it from zero to, let's say, 50%. Okay, create that trigger. Oh yeah, you can also delay triggers. So seconds to trigger is also a nice way to fool around with your people. So if we go and say, it takes five seconds to trigger that. Update the trigger, there's the trigger. Create a new effect, E cat 01 because it belongs to that trigger. And I'll call that boo. Got him. And this time we are going to affect the mission state of cats. And we'll affect it by hmm. I think by 100% again. And of course, pick a sound for that. Maybe go for something something different here. Hum sound. Hmm. Some of these sounds don't have a sound effect. As you can see. Creature land. Oh yeah. We can do that. So that is that sound effect. And also, we'll spawn on our tile, which is the gravel 955 15 16. 955 15 16. And we'll spawn a wild cat at the age of 5. And we'll call it Pikachu. Mm. And it's raging. <laughs> All right. I don't even know if a cat can have an age of five. We'll see. We'll create that effect. And you notice once you created an effect and you are in the edit trigger effect menu, you can also in the lower part of the effect, you can already link a trigger to that effect. All right. We've linked that. And we update the effect. Mission looks good. So you, as you can see, you can go from the mission menu to the trigger, from the trigger menu to the effect menu, and from the effect menu to the trigger menu, and forth and back. So it's easy to get lost in those menus, but you'll get um, your way around once you're doing it a little bit more. But you'll go into the trigger and see, okay, the effect is there, so everything's fine. 
Okay, update the trigger. Examine the gravel. And yeah, it's let's test it mission. So it should take five seconds after examining the gravel for the cat to spawn. Uh, or not. <laughs> All right, so there's a wild cat. Fortunately, I am AGM, so it's not attacking me. But yeah, potential danger here if we go to that mission and say it may restart could potentially spawn millions of cats. All on the same tile in the center. <laughs> and this looks a little bit psychedelic, but it's five cats. <laughs> uh, also the, um, the gender is always random. Right. Oh, this is not triggered every five seconds here. Let's see. Is it now? Oh, target is spawn point. Hmm. Does it only work if it's a spawn point? See, no. Seconds were set to zero for that action since it's quick. Oh. That's right. Um, examine is a instant action. So the seconds to trigger you can use on, for example, if somebody uses the mining action. So the trigger will, will wait until your uh, timer bar has hit five seconds. So if the, let's say the mining action uh, takes seven seconds, you set seconds to trigger to five um, then while you're doing that mining action and you didn't finish it, the cat in this case would still spawn. So that is what that's about. I thought you can delay that, but apparently that's not the case. All right. So yeah, that's a very simple, simple mission, uh, where you can spawn cats. Of course, a step on trigger would probably be a little bit better there, but hey. <laughs> so that concludes this video. If you have any questions about missions or triggers in Warm Unlimited, just ask around. Feel free to hit me up on Discord. My Discord name is down in the description. And of course, also the Warm uh, Unlimited modding Discord. Feel free to join. People are generally nice and want to help you. All right, I'll see you in the next mission video where we will be going about a layered mission that is a real little quest that we are wanting to build. And in the video number three, we'll be glossing over how to also altering mission states uh, via database manipulation and other neat little tricks. All right, so I wish you a very nice day. And I hope you learned something and maybe we'll talk to each other on the modding Discord. Bye.